Hey, nerds. Join us on Discord and hit that subscribe button. Hey. I'm Olma. Kellek. Flynn. Zika. Thessaly. And I'm your DM, Seth. Welcome to Venture Forth. Last we left our heroes. Under an absent moon in the middle of Sunplume, the agents of repair met with a mare, Grom Sunshield, in the aftermath of a frost giant raid. Olma's ties to the town of Sunplume were revealed, and it was discovered that Grom, at least, had a familiarity with the Lady Alexandra mm-hmm. and her family, and knew perhaps more than the ordinary Sunplume citizen might about their history. He went into his home, and in the comfort of his living room, you all discussed the recent attack. Olma's ties to the town, the reasons behind this most recent attack, and came to some conclusions about why the Order of the Red Wolf and Barrett Hastel had pointed the giants in the direction of the town, perhaps a way to cover their tracks, so further destruction and chaos, still a few questions left unanswered, but a solid direction pointed to. After a short rest in the mayor's living room, you all returned once again to the town square to gather some spoils from your victory. Oh, yeah. And most of you returned to Oma's home. But Kellick entered into the Gilded Nugget, the larger inn at the center of town, where he met with the proprietor, Tobin Goldhand. And in the aftermath of the battle, where the wounded gathered, gave hope and healing to a family in desperate need of good news and a change in luck. Back at the house... Alma and Seeker spoke about Thessaly and Kellick for a short time. <laughs> the intricacies therein before <laughs> Kellick arrived and the conversation turned to less light matters. Someone's mm. always asking Alma about that, like Kellick and Thessaly. Thessaly. <laughs> <laughs> I like Thessaly. Oh, that's Thessaly. a great ship name. Kessaly. Yeah. Thessaly. Yeah. <laughs> Thessaly. Um, or Kessaly. But after a, a short and entertaining conversation regarding. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation turned to um, heavier things, mm. specifically Flynn and whatever deal he might have made and the changes that have been wrought upon him. And as that conversation took place upstairs, Flynn in the bathroom, where all great truths are revealed. <laughs> Unfurled his contract and learned a little more about just exactly what kind of deal he had made, what he received, and what he had to give in exchange. But as we return, we don't come back to the bathroom. Instead, we're going to let him enjoy his bath. We're going to let him enjoy that bubble bath, and we're going to go outside to Thessaly, who exited the living room, headed out back to get some space. And as we come back to Thessaly in the dark there, you hear the the sort of, it's dark, uh, you hear the the sort of snow of the long eve crunching underneath your boots as you just sort of pace back and forth in the backyard. And I would like to know, what exactly is going through Thessaly's mind? What are they thinking about? Um, so I I am doing exactly what I said I was going to do. I am um, pacing probably like if, I don't know if it's like a yard or if it's sectioned off in any way, but like if there's a guard, I'm just going to pace the length of it like mm-hmm. over and over and over again until the ground, like you can probably, if, if there's any give to the snow, we can start to see the ground underneath. Um, and if anyone were to see me for some reason, like my hands are very agitated and they're like being thrown up in the air. I'm kind of, I'm like muttering under my breath to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am just thinking I'm on the verge of a little bit of panic. And I am thinking about the last time I had a place to call home and the last time that that place was attracted unwanted attention and the last time that I had a group of people I could actually let down. And I'm just going to pace and pace and pace until eventually I just get too tired and I'm just going to sit in the snow for a bit and look around and... I go to like try to pull up some weeds, but then I remember it's it's cold <laughs> and there are no weeds to pull up. And I just sort of sit with my 
back to the wall and uh, eventually I will find my way back into the in, into the interior of the house okay. after all that. The sort of uh, the habitual attempt to, to do something productive in your frustration recalling back to the grounds of the Lord's Manor where you used to spend so much time, your tendency to keep to the garden and make sure that things stayed looking nice and pretty and that sort of urge takes you and you look around and you see no weeds but as you finally get up all of that kind of weighing on you you get back to the door that leads in and through the window you can see as all the agents have now gathered down in the living room you can see them sitting you see bowls of porridge and Alma Kellick and Seeker's hands as Flynn freshly bathed um, comes down the uh, comes down the stairs and I don't know what Thessaly might make of that, but you see them there, gathered in the warmth of the fire and the light. I feel that I, I, my heart rate, if possible, gets a little higher, um, beats a little faster, and I just, I look up into the, the sky of the Long Eve, and for what seems to be coming more frequently, I say this to Fenra, you don't get to have them too. You don't. And then I'm going to go back in the house. Okay. Leslie Flynn, there's porridge on the stove. Por- oh, it is. It's morning. <sighs> Perfect. Gosh, it's morning. Okay. <laughs> Food. Yes. Thank thank you, Oma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll have some. Okay. Brim, I didn't ask you earlier. I'm sorry. Sometimes I just forget you're here. <laughs> it's you're so, so quiet. quiet. That's all right. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm tired. <laughs> yep. That makes my, sense. Do you need... It. Real ass whooping out there, guys. Giants yeah, you feeling okay? Hit hard. Oh yeah, we I'm could good. tend I'm to good. your wounds. If you'd oh like. no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm. And he kind of like rolls his shoulders <laughs> and kind of he hops up on his yeah. toes. You see, he's very lithe and like active, and he's like, "I'm good, I'm good. Thank you, thank okay, you." Okay, well, why don't you get um, something to eat? I'm just gonna run upstairs really quick for no reason. Right. Um, <laughs> I just think I left something in my room, and then I'll be right back down. Just a red eyebrow arches, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> but. Uh, Okay, gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah, we should probably get going, huh? Yeah, but you should eat something first, right. and then we'll get going. Right, right, right. And maybe we'll collect Griff, um, from the town square. I think Griff is gonna uh, come with us. Cool. All right. Um, Brim walks over, grabs the. That's not gonna get confusing. Why did I do this to myself? <laughs> um, uh, but uh, uh, anyway, so yeah, Brim walks over, grabs a, a, a like spoons up a kind of absurd amount of porridge, um, and just like scarfs. Like, he's just shoveling food into his face. There's lots um, of porridge. But uh, as yeah, keep keepers in the kitchen, and he's like helping tend to it and stuff. Um, but yeah, you head upstairs. As I as I go to the shed, I go keeper. And like, we try to get Keeper to come with me. Yes, upstairs. and he takes the spoon and taps it on the side and sets it on the little spoon rest right there that he has. And he, right away, and he follows you up the stairs. I just feel like we're little like, like secretive gossips and like, that like run around the house together. All right. So yeah, uh, I'll be back just off to help. Mr. Soma, and then he just goes upstairs <laughs> with you. So you guys all sit there eating uh, your porridge. Yeah, just it's best I'm just to let them have it. Whatever's all right. All right. Um, but yeah, you head upstairs. Um, you go into your room. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I feel like I remember there being more things in the room that I might want to grab. Yes. Do you remember? Do you think there's something in there? Yes, there's um the the ladies. Um, her reliquary she often wore yeah. when traveling. Right. What is that? <laughs> I, I don't know. She's had it for as long as I've known her. Yeah, you said she wore it when she traveled, so maybe now is a good time to wear it. I just don't know what it does. Um, I frankly don't either. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, but we'll find this out together, yeah. or you'll find out and then tell me. <laughs> Okay. So I just wear it? I believe so. I. She always had it uh, whenever she'd leave. It, in fact, I remember it was odd that she left it here. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll take it then, I guess. Very well. And he walks over to the to the bookshelf and uh, does the necessary mm-hmm. 
doohickeys to open up and you see the the walls open up um and you see there are the stack of platinum uh, <laughs> that, that I just <laughs> try to ignore yeah. because I don't know what to, um, how to deal uh, with it. Okay. And uh, he reaches in and he pulls out a, a reliquary again. It's kind of like a, um, it almost looks like a, like that, like a sort of diamond shape. It's kind of like it has like a a deep blue sort of tinge to it, and you can see there's a faint little bit of liquid inside that looks even through the sort of blue, almost gem like quality of the reliquary. You can see um, this sort of red crimson liquid that's sort of bouncing around in there um and then you see a sort of silver like cap almost okay. to it um and it rests on a silver chain and he picks it up and he um he gives it to you hands it to you if i pull it up to my eye and try to look through it do i see anything interesting um yeah you notice a couple of things so as as you pick it up the first thing i think that you notice is the cap so as you look the cap is uh, pretty small the size of a very small coin um, but you can see sort of there carved into it. You actually see, um, and very worn as if it was thumbed over the course of maybe eight centuries or so, sort of almost like a, like a habit. You see a sort of worn, um, visage of a wolf mm. that sits on top uh, of it. Okay. <gasps> so there's a wolf on the cap? Like on the cap, like on the silver cap, there's like a, like a wolf carving. Um, and it's like a vial, right? Mm-hmm, it's kind of like a vial. And, um, and as you hold it up, you see through there, you see like a thick sort of viscous liquid. Um, and in the light, like I think almost probably seen enough of it. Uh, there's blood inside of it. Uh, oh. There's blood inside. Oh. Correct. Of the, vi- of the relic. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yum. Slurp, slurp. Did you just say <laughs> yum? Yum. Yum, yum. Gross. If I put it do on, tasted blood? does it feel like? Does it? Do I feel anything? <laughs> um, as soon as you, as soon as you put it on, you know it's definitively special. Like there's mm-hmm. something about it that, that kind of, like a, a a a weight kind of settles on you that goes beyond, and you can kind of almost feel the power rating radiating off from it. Um, this is definitely some form of magical boon that used to belong to the Lady Alexandra, um, and. It's going to take a little bit of time, but given a little bit of time, you probably would figure out exactly what this thing does. Does it require attunement? Yeah. You'd have to take some off. Oh, yeah. What are the three off. things you have again? Sorry. I have the, the mirror's necklace, and I have the belt, <clears throat> and I belt. have um, and the, cloak. the cloak. What does the mirror's um, necklace do? It keeps me from being able to be tracked. Does Located. it go? Yeah. <laughs> well, d- well d- not right d- now. D- not right now. Right now. A certain. But it keeps me from being able to be like... Um, scried upon. Scried, scried. upon. Okay. Yeah. Which... Really know how many people are looking for me to scry upon me, so I, I don't know if I really care. Right. So I guess yeah, I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna and who doesn't who's not wearing one right now? Me. Seeker? Okay. Do you have a slot? No. No. Ah. Uh, oh wait, do I? I don't think I have a slot. Uh, okay. We can sell it. Oh, I don't really need money anymore. No. <laughs> Right. What do you mean? We don't know. I know. We don't know. I know. I'll put it in my backpack. Okay. Um, oh, oh wait, you put the I necklace do. in your backpack. Yeah, the Samir's oh, necklace. Oh no, Samir's necklace. Oh. And mm. oh. as the um, that necklace sort of settles on you, you feel that sort of process, but quickly begin to take hold. Oh, like this does not require an hour to attune to. Not, oh, not okay. by you. Not by me. Oh. So oh. as you can kind of feel it, and then in sort of like a flash of almost inspiration, like this sort of idea just comes to you as if the item demands something, and you know that in order to complete the attunement process, you have to place your blood into the amulet. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, um, um, but do I have to op- do I like open the vial maybe yeah. and put the blood in? Um, cool. Okay, um, at my belt, I have a dagger that's there. Ah! What? I'm gonna swipe open my finger. I thought we just talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not agreeing to work with a demon. Uh, you don't know that's what you're going to do. No. I'm not agreeing to anything. Do I feel like this is an agreement? Do I feel like this is like... No, this, no, is, this, is, this is an attunement This is an to... protection that, that well, Lady Alexandra always traveled with this. I have faith that like mm, she traveled with reason. it and... Yeah. Yeah. For whatever reason that it was important to her. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So you take out blood the dagger, magic, you know, and you take my off bloodline. the cap, and you 
you slice across your finger. Mm -hmm. And as you sort of drop your blood into Mm -hmm. it, like on the way down, you see as your blood sort of enters and kind of passes the top of the vial, you see the fluid inside of it vanish. Oh, Oh, shit. As your blood begins to fill it up. And you complete the attunement process to the amulet of Lady Alexandra. Ooh. It is in your D&D Beyond. Yeah. Uh, it should be. Um, it is a wondrous item and requires attunement by a sorcerer from the bloodline of the Red Wolf. Oh, uh, How many of those are there? Again, do you do you want <laughs> to keep it a secret or do, I, do you want me to read you the description? What, um, uh, what would you prefer? Go ahead and read it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. Um, what is it called? It's called the Amulet of Lady Alexandra. This amulet that once belonged to Lady Alexandra Davin is forged with delicate precision and expert craftsmanship. Its glass is imbued with an iridescent sheen, shimmering with hues of deep crimson and midnight blue as if reflecting the twilight of a thousand memories. The silver cap, ornate and detailed, carries the symbol of a wolf. To attune to this vial, you must place a few drops of your blood into it. The vial can't be opened while your attunement to it lasts. If your attunement to the vial ends, the contained blood turns to ash. You can use the vial as a spellcasting focus for your spells while wearing or holding it, and you gain a plus two bonus to spell attack rolls and a plus two bonus to the saving throw DCs of your sorcerer spells. Whoa! I don't think I was listening to any of that. You got so plus I gotta two read it. to your spell attack. <laughs> while wow. attuned to the amulet, you have a spell focus. Then. You may select one additional meta magic option available to you from the sorcerer list, what? and may use up to two meta magic options on any sorcerer spell you cast. Uh-huh. In addition, because that's a bonus action, so because you use a bonus action to do a meta magic, so I can now you can do use two, two at once, even if it says you ordinarily wouldn't in be able to. In oh. addition, <laughs> while attuned to the vial, the cost okay. of creating spell slots, as shown in the creating spell slots table, PHP page 101, will cost you one sorcery point less than normal, oh. and you can create spell slots of up to sixth level. It will cost seven sorcery points to convert a sixth level spell slot. Ordinarily, you're limited to fifth. Almost gonna take over the world. Yeah, <laughs> I That's... may. Yeah, this the rarity I screwed up. So it's it's much rarer than rare. But yeah, ha! <laughs> oh, that is so strong. Blood. Wow. Blood. So, I need to when? read it because I'm not a listener person. I'm a That's right. <laughs> That's fair. reader. Wow. It's effectively a um, a blood well amulet, which is a rare magic item, just with a few additional properties. Make the plus cool. two to, to attack rolls and save to yeah, that's, wow. that's awesome. Huge, it's enormous. Mm-hmm. And then the upgrades to the magic. So if my attunement yeah. ends, the the whole vo- the contained blood turns to ash, and I would have to put more blood into it. So like if I took it off and stopped attuning to yeah. it. Yeah. If you choose to unattune from okay. the item. Wow. Okay. Wow. So saving through DCs of your sorcery spells. Okay. <clears throat> so they have to save. So like they're saving. What what they have to roll is yeah. now too higher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Get him. <clears throat> you talk about two, two get, meta magics yeah. per spell. Excuse me. Elsers. I mean, it takes a lot to use a meta magic. It's a thing. So. It costs a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think it's already added it to D and D Beyond. It's already added the new. The spells like DC. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that should be the modifiers yeah, should already be 11, yeah. on there. That's very great. cool. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> very 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 cool. Thank you. <laughs> wow. You're welcome. I mean, your grandmother was a great grandmother. Was a uh, eight hundred year old sorceress. She had some cool shit. <laughs> <laughs> she had yeah. some stuff. She had some and cool stuff. it appears that um, this may be the only gift that she hasn't already given you that yeah. she can. But while that's going on, mm-hmm. could speak. Speaking of, yeah. could I have uh, <laughs> just acknowledged the the breastplate seeker? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Has that uh, uh, not cursed? I hope. No, not at all. The see the runes. They Aye. correspond to cold, fire, lightning, poison, and thunder. Ah, all right. You can, you can set the runes to resist one one of those. All right. And if you are able to resist damage, you can direct it to uh, an enemy in the area. Hell. Oh, and I mean it's armor, so it makes you harder to hurt. Yeah, it's unbesmirched, must be. In a very good way, it's very strong. 
It's, it's, nice. Uh, it's a nice plate. Does um, it didn't say anything about making you more quiet, though. So. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't feel that's a concern. Oh, always, because you don't sneak so good. But uh, I bought. That's not my job, is it? Nope. No. Just so we're, we have an understanding. <laughs> don't need to be good at all things. You can take healing and talking and being more compass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Whatever. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Perpetual crank. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the damn brass plate. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As uh, Olma comes down from the stairs, uh, unless she she wanted to take any more time upstairs. No, I come down, I wrap my finger up. Cool. Um, um, so something I found last night, everyone, which is why I went upstairs to go and grab it, obviously. <laughs> something I found last night was um, there's this notebook and this piece of paper that was up in the in the bedroom, in her library, in the bedroom. On the shelves, you what, know? Why do you keep doing that when you talk about your room? What do you mean? Mm, it's like um, a pause. <laughs> well, it's the first time I've only slept there one night, so it still feels very weird to call it my bedroom. Okay. What did, what's, what's the matter? Yeah, okay, what did so you find? this piece of paper fell out, <laughs> and um, it sounds kind of creepy, and I don't really know what it means, but I bet... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six heads are better than one. Sure. So, with regard to the piece of paper, what? Okay. What's on the piece of paper? Well, it says something interesting. <laughs> Wait, are can you, we see the piece of can paper? Can we see it? Well, yes. I mean, let's... yeah, that's why I'm bringing it up. All right. Okay. Just okay. Tell us what it says, Alma. There was, there was a lot of build. You were to... going to read it, or yeah, yeah I can just talk about it. Oh my gosh, well, maybe I don't want to bring it up now. If everyone's giving no, me a I'm hassle. sorry. I'm sorry. Not with your finger. Fine. My finger? Yeah. I cut it on the piece of paper. Oh, oh ow. Okay. <laughs> um, so you just want me to read it to you? Yeah. Yes. I think that might be the easiest besides passing it around. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> In the shadowed heart of the timeless woods, the she wolf song was first heard. Eight centuries shall pass ere the echo returns from a creature of word. A daughter of the crimson beast, with heart unyielding and fierce, shall find her path to the sacred stone where ancient and present merge. The oak, silent, waits with bated breath for the fateful day when she, born of the red wolf's line, drives the eternal decay away. Alongside others, she will mend the fractured world, a weave of old and new threads, chill, spin, and the cycle as old as the ticking stars with her courage shall finally thin. Beware, for not all is as it seems, and shadows may lead astray, but trust in the blood of the Red Wolf's line to illuminate the true way. Whoa. So, I mean, it's got a lot of stuff, but I don't actually know. I mean, like, it's kind of obvious it's about me, um, but I don't know. Well, where'd you get it from? Who is it just wrote, a lullaby, or? Who wrote that? Because it rhymes, so. Do you? Well, it's just a random piece of paper. It's not that comforting of a lullaby. I don't know. Quite yeah. a, um, it was it in the notebook. It was in the Lady Alexandra's tent. notebook. In oh, a notebook. In like a, a journal. Yeah. Is it in her handwriting? Um. Yeah, it kind of looks like it. Oh. I mean, it looks like the other notes that I've seen. Um. She, um, she foretold the agents of repair. That's kind of what it sounds like. <laughs> maybe she just thought that you would be able to save the world. It's not which, that. I mean, I think moms always think great of. She's not my mom. You know, great, great gram, 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 <laughs> gram, great mm-hmm. gram, grandma, whatever. This is very specific. Well, uh, and not uh, daughter of the red wolf, right? among others, right? So that's not that crazy of a stretch that she would have some help. But it is. It does Ooh. seem kind of on spot. Well, what's I mean, this thing about the the. The wood fixing the oak? Something, the, the something oak about the oak No, the stone? oak silent waits with bated breath. So I think, like, when we go, maybe they'll to know more about oak this to Oak and Gate. gate. They're waiting they're for they're waiting, it. maybe. Oh. Or they're just, like, silent until oh, they're waiting the right time. To help until you maybe. get there. Maybe. Also, the but beginning says the shadowed heart of the timeless woods. I mean, like, 
that's kind of like where we found the crown originally, right? I mean, it was Shadow, Shadow the, wood, the Shadow right. Timberland. Mm-hmm. What does what does it say about that again? Shadowed heart. In the shadowed heart of the timeless wood, the she wolf's song was first heard. That's kind of where we she met. Wolf. The she wolf song. Maybe I'm the she wolf. Like a howl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Was that where your song was first heard? That part is confusing to me. For sure. Is the is the she wolf connected to? Uh, is it related to the red wolf? Like, is it a kind of red wolf? Shadowed heart. I just thought that it was timeless like because remember in the shadow Timberland, and there was all blackness and we, right. It was covered it was in shadows time, from the tomb. Of the it red was wolf. the first time we ever worked together to defeat a a curse or mm-hmm. a it's bad true. thing. That's right. Do we think she knew the future or like a like had a vision maybe and wrote it down is that what we're thinking happened could be some kind of prophecy i don't know what's the thing about a a, a curse or something there's some thing that you're against i don't telling lies or something uh, beware for not all is as it seems no before no. that uh, <laughs> after the bit about the tree the oak do you want the paper and you can just yes me? please <laughs> <laughs> uh, drives away yes uh, when she born of the red wolf's line that's you Alma drives the eternal decay away which the is the eternal decay like what's death that? like the red wolf cult order of the red wolf or, are they a decay well um, hang on oh, keep going the cycle is old as the ticking stars with her courage, shall finally ten. What if that's about what Artemisia said? Aye, that's what caught my ear as well. Mm-hmm. Did what? what hmm? Artemisia mm-hmm. said something to the effect of... <sighs> the old gods were mortals once. Mm-hmm. And ah. they overthrew the gods before them. Mm-hmm. And that created some kind of cataclysm, which then mm-hmm. brought about Elbor as we know it today. Mm-hmm. And that by extension, the new gods would do something similar. So that might be the cycle that's being referred to here. Makes that sense. Yes. Destined to end, maybe, if her great great grandmother? Great. Whichever. Great grandmother. Uh, I mean, is it correct. also could just be like maybe one day I'll have a child years down the line. True. It might not be us to end the cycle. We should still try. What about the, the decay? So- I don't care. What a Prophecy says it's not going to stop me from trying to do whatever we can. Um, but it is maybe encouraging that this is the case. How do, maybe this is just like a weird fever dream she had, and it doesn't even mean... I mean, how many people do you know that can make prophecies? That just... Oh, man, that, have you ever had a prophecy? Because, I mean, if you're related... Like a vision? It would make sense that maybe you would have Have I one. ever had a prophecy? <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's the way you word that. Sorry, do you understand it though? Have I ever given a prophecy? <laughs> have you ever ha- been given? Oh, been given? Boy. Have you ever had a vision? Oh, what? Of that's the future? I, I don't know. Help me out here, guys. Um, uh, have have I ever had a vision of the Sh- try future? Try to stand your chances and sort of see things as Eldoria wanted him to see. Have you ever? That was weird. Done though. something? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, it yes. is weird. Yeah. This is weird. I sort of shake the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's strange, Olma. From the um, yeah. I don't think I've ever had a vision, but maybe the whole world is a vision. Maybe this what? is a vision oh, right now. Not making sense. I'm not, well, <laughs> now you do something. We have try to it. accept some kind of reality. I, what I mean, about <laughs> what about the decay? The decay. I mean, sometimes That's I have it. dreams and nightmares. Us. I mean, yeah, we have those. A weave of old but, and new threads shall spin. You, so, you have weaves that you pull? I and well, like, yes, I n- negotiate with the threads to talk to people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there a lot of negotiating going on? Yes, there's quite a few of them. Well, oh, what do you tell them, them to convince them? Well, they're not exactly... You have to uh, assert your will over them in order to... Oh, so you bully them? Uh, well, I got to do it somehow. It's he negotiates. Like, That's not exact. bullying. I'm, mm. I'm, never mind. What? <laughs> what, what if the decay is this cycle itself? She said it's gone on for ages. Right. Uh, it's eternal. 
And what does it mean to thin it? I don't understand what that means. To thin the... It says to thin the decay? No, it says to thin the... Thin the cycle. The cycle. I'm, I'm, I wonder if... Here, Does it's that mean not... to stop it? To end it? No, thin to understand you know, it? Like what does that mean thin to thin? A soup. It weakens it. Um, uh, what the cycle is all the ticking stars with her courage shall finally thin. With her courage? So, so her courage will thin the cycle. But what does that you just actually have to mean? But then what is it? I still don't understand what it means to thin it. If does it's it mean thin to... enough, you could you can break, break it, it, end it. Mm. Okay. But it doesn't say to break it. It says to thin it. Yeah, well, but maybe thin rhymes with thin, so maybe it's it called, doesn't tell you, know, you how to. It did say something earlier Black about them. So I it, just have to be brave. Co- co- correct. Says, prophecies have to rhyme. It's like a rule. Is it? <laughs> That's, as I understand. Or, yeah. Have you ever heard this prophecy? That one. Yeah, that one. No. There's a few others I've heard. Yeah? You've Any heard? about me? <laughs> <laughs> Great question, Oma. Not that I know of. Um, <laughs> but maybe somebody at Oaken Gate will know more about this prophecy. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Could be. You know? y- you've heard prophecies before. Have they come true? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? There's, prophecy, there's all kinds of prophecies. Sometimes they, they come true. true. Sometimes they come true in a way that. They, sometimes they came true. They come true over. in like that weird way where it's like, oh, it kind of happened, like, and you can like backwards sort of make it compatible and connect the dots <laughs> in reverse because that's how freaking prophecies work. I don't know. There's stuff in the there's stuff in the library at Oaken Gate. But like, it does say to beware of people who are going to lead you astray. So, the shadows, right? The shadows will lead you astray. Hmm. Mm. Thought it what? said shadows will lead you astray. I it, thought it was something to, the, to that effect. Um, let me see where is it in here. And it said something <laughs> about finding a stone. Stone? stone? Some, I thought. I thought. It oh, did. it did. It said, yeah. After uh, the oak shadows thing. may lead astray. Right. Shadows may lead astray. Don't trust the dark or shadows. Uh, no. Looking for a bit about a stone. Oh, uh, shall find her path to the sacred stone for Thank ancient you. and present marriage. Bruh. Has anyone heard of sacred stone? Ancient. Is there a sacred stone in the, um, you know, your place? <gasps> Do you guys think the sacred stone is the moving island? Well, mm? no. What? No, not so much. An island's island not a stone. Sounds more like, an, like a thing you could pick up rather than like a whole but place. But that's where the eternal, like the ancient meet, right? right, right? And yeah, that's where, where ancient and present marriage. But that could mean just about anything. It okay. could, yes. Yeah, that's a... And it's very general. This is all very general. Well, that's prophecies. They can't be that specific. Am I? Did I? Did I sleep through something in school one day? Did More we than likely, just, yes. I, no, I mean, definitely. I don't know about anything about prophecies. Is quite lacking, Tesla. I think this is well oh. established at this point. Brim. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Sacred stone. <laughs> there are probably lots of sacred stones. There's lots of powerful stones. Oh, wow. There is one sacred stone. How do I interpret it? Try it. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keep not listening brain. to them anymore. I'm, so, I'm looking at Bray. Yeah, I take a step closer. <laughs> look at me. I put my I, I put my eyes to his. I was like, look at me. There's a prophecy about me, and now I gotta know if there's a sacred stone. <laughs> so just level with me. It's about all of us, kind of. No, it's about me. But we are don't the make ones, this about you. We are the this ones helping you. <laughs> oh my god. Brim looks so uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay. So, in Oaken Gate, there's the Order of the Ever Seeing. Mm-hmm. Right. Your 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 order. That's us. That's Do they me. deal with shadows? No. Okay. Cool. <laughs> but there is the Bright Wall. Hmm. Which is kind of like a stone. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a big one. Is that what you use to find the magical people and? Mm-hmm. Things. Yeah. It's. Oh, Brother Damon's gonna kill me. Not if he doesn't find out. Not if I kill you first. We're good at hey, keeping we're not here. Are we? Look at my bot. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, come on. <laughs> um, but... It takes a while to get away with that. <sighs> the Bright Wall. The Bright Wall. The, the Bright Wall was left by Laris in the mountain. Hmm? Left? We must go now. We must go immediately. Wait, wait a Seeker. second. Don't, don't it was left cool, by cool. Lowers in the high mountain. Not the high mountain. Sorry. I'm, I'm That's another dimension. Kind of new to this, guys. But look, when Lowers 
created magic and gave it to, to the world. <laughs> when Lowers created magic and gave it to the world, he knew there had to be safeguards. That's what we are. The Order of the Everseeing. There are... There's Oaken Gate, and there are the Sister Temples. Lowris left the Bright Wall as a way for us to keep an eye on things and make sure that magic didn't, again, get out of hand like it did during the Great War. Oh. Huh. I want to see this. It's pretty special. That would be where ancient and present merge. If it's an ancient stone from Lauris. That still Hold helps on. you track today. And the oak yeah. waits, so we should right. go to the... Oak and gate. What does the bright wall do? Magic. It's... I, well, there yes, has to be secret. a more specific There's answer, There's lots of magic seeker. in the world. <clears throat> Brother Boo. Yes. <laughs> Please answer my question. <laughs> he... You just you come on. Let's uh, outside. Mm-hmm. I'll show you outside. Oh, um, so- and he just like walks <laughs> out the, of the front door, and he goes out to the um, to the front, like mm-hmm. kind of outside of the house. And um, you see, as he kind of he like clears away, he uses shape water to shift a bunch of snow to the side. Um, and then you see like bare <laughs> dirt Aww. underneath it, and he uses mold earth to create a map of Elbor. Like, you can see it. And then he he says, the bright wall is basically this, but... And then he uses produce flame, and, like, there's, like, little flames that kind of dance across the face of the map and, like, kind of brighten and fade and then brighten and fade. Um, He's like, it's much cooler than this, but the basic idea is that the bright wall is kind of like a lens. It shows us Elbor and where magic, magical signatures, powerful ones, emerge. And alongside these, and he pulls out the device that he has, we're able to attune these devices to any of those magical signatures that appear and track them down. To see if they're good or bad. Yeah. So this bright wall may lead us where we need to go. To more magic. Could be. Well, that island it might contain the outcast, in maybe figuratively or literally, and maybe we could use the bright wall to find it. The island. Uh, the island that moves, it disappears and shows up in random places. Haunted. It's not haunted. So they sit on the ship. But well, that's it, just. That was a tale told. We don't know about it. Roll a little mm-hmm. roll history check for old Brim for here. Brimmy boy. Brimmy boy. Oh. Oh. See if he paid attention in class. Roll good. Um, Somebody roll, had to. Roll good. Story. Oh, God, he's so good at these. This is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, he just, you, you set it up. He no, I did. Blankly, like, when you say, like, the island that moves around, he's just like, I don't it's okay. You were focused on punching. Uh, we only really know <laughs> about learning how from to do experience. this and tell stories with your. I don't know that it's well elements. documented either. I, the Red Wolf uh, himself, I think, if I remember correctly, right, Seeker, was it his journal that you found it in, Afton? Yes. The, yes. The Re- Lord Afton. Uh, what's a better way to refer to him? That piece of shite. Uh, <laughs> he was mm-hmm. desperate to find the the this island that moves around. And the only reason we know of it is because we saw it when we traveled. We, we were sailing to uh, Oakenspire. Can you imagine if we had tank. gone on that island? What's on the island? Why well, does it move? Afton suggested that it was uh, the outcast himself. His prison. Which is where he was held. Oh. Right. So mm-hmm. uh, maybe with the bright wall we could find it, and I don't, I don't know what we could do with it. Just so I'm clear, we think it's a good idea to go here. Should we maybe well, use the I don't bright wall to find something that can make the outcast no more? Or we, I mean, we could even use it to find the other gates. 
Why? But hang on. Mm-hmm. So it has the outcast's prison on it? Maybe. That's what I was implied. If that's true, huh. I don't think Lauris would want anybody to be able to find it, right? Well, so right how much control sure. does Lauris have over how the Brightfall is used? I mean, Especially it, now that his powers are waning. Yeah, where, where is Lauris even? Also, it seems like someone already found it, and the outcast is doing a pretty great job of circumventing their prison, so maybe we should go there and just do a little, um, uh, what do they call that when you, when you check how things are working? Um, Recon. when you control, you control the quality, what? Nope. That, quality yeah. Control. Yeah. Quality that's, control. That's, that's what we did at the last prison we went to. I, I will oh. say, uh, the last Not time we did, way, uh, come in close contact with the island, um, we switched our... Some things happened. Souls around. What? Yeah. Yes. That's true. I deeply became, unsettling. I became Calic. Yeah, I got yeah. put into Shreya's body. Mm-hmm. Whoa. He it was really, not clean. really weird. <laughs> My knees hurt so badly. It makes a lot of sense. I got sense. some exercises that for that, but <laughs> we need some help, you know. I am fine. Okay. <laughs> Everything here is working perfectly well. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Right, right. Basically, what I'm saying is that, yeah, I mean, like, there, there are risks... That come with it, so yeah, like we might we want might. to get more information okay, on well, it. Okay, well, maybe we should do We're gonna go to Oaken Gate anyway. Go. So yeah, I think we should so do let's that. Let's go to Oaken Gate, and maybe they all know more about the prophecy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, if nothing else, just getting Alma to see the Bright Wall might tell us more of what there is mm-hmm. to know. I think okay. I have a headache. I'm sorry. Do you need more porridge? Probably, you probably ate no. too much porridge. It's hey. I really well, didn't. Might, I get headaches sometimes when I overeat. It's the information, Flynn. It's the amount of information I receive on a daily basis by being a part of the agents of repair. I wasn't built to retain this much we information. Are inundated with it. It's true. Okay, well, I'll just put this prophecy away. And I oh, just oh, it's, it not, it's, not, it's not about you. It's, fi- it's fine. It's okay. Fine. There I is still have to tell you about wh- prophecies next time I get them. No, I'll just I don't. What you feel like no, you can't tell me things. I don't know, but prophecies are of great importance. Yep. Good. I'm glad you brought this to our attention. Thank you. Yep. There Definitely can just go somewhere else. One. If she needs to be. Yes. <laughs> um. Brim, you look like you're thinking a lot, and like you might have something to share. Just out with it. So I haven't seen it. The bright wall? No, I've seen that. Oh. <laughs> I've only like there's well, stories. Stories. Rumors. Uh, you you haven't told us the subject of what you're thinking of yet. You're, you're just telling us around it and There's someone I know who has given prophecies. Oh. I've never met them. Then how do you know them? I've heard of her. Okay. She's kinda scary. What's her name? Thalnora? Thalmora? Thalnora. Thalnora. She's um spooky. Spooky. Spooky good, oh, spooky, spooky right. bad, spooky. Is there a good spooky? I don't think there's a good, good. spooky. <laughs> I think some people think I'm spooky. I've only ever no. heard no one stories. And actually, no one that I know has actually seen her, just her house. What? Where's her house? And he points over at the raging oh, in the woods. woods. Yeah, but it also Sorry. moves okay. around. Is she, um... Oh, do you want to, like, call her name? A spooky lady in the woods with a moving house? Yeah. Okay. I I suppose that might be worth considering. But, like, the moving island, you know, made me think of it. Yeah. And she's given prophecies before? Do you think maybe she gave this prophecy? Maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. To oh. your great grandmother, yeah. your great grandmother just wrote it down and decided not to share it with anybody. Or maybe, Who would she share it with? Yeah. Right, that's a great question. Just maybe she did share it. Just, just with everyone that's. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So they she's just, like a witch in the woods. People who get near just hear her oh. voice. Cool. And is there a way? To, if it moves, is there a way to find it? I don't know. You hear a voice. What does the voice say? I don't know. Spooky shit. I, I, he said but, he's never seen it. I don't know. It's just a rumor. heard about it. Like, there, there are people at Oakengate who are pretty old. Brother Kalar, notwithstanding, he's like 400 so, or something like that. Do so, people, but 
but people tell you about this, meaning they live after they. I just heard a couple. It's like mm. it's like spooky stories that they told us is not like that. Novices got told, you know what I mean, by some of the older monks or I mean, novices. Certainly. Do I recall they, any of these stories now that he's like bringing it up? I think, as you oh. think about it, yeah, yeah, mm. you probably remember like once or twice that there is a spirit, an mm -hmm. entity, a creature, mm -hmm. a something. It kind of changes, mm -hmm. yeah. but there is something in the Raging Wood that appears to some people and beckons. And it's like, a, you know, they say that there's different rumors. She yeah. eats people, yeah. or mm -hmm. she she takes your soul, or she leaves like she twists fate around you and gives you a wish, but everything about it is bad, and it never is what you actually want it to be. There were all these different stories, so all, and all these different things. versions. It was almost all it, like the stories, yes, because they were meant to scare you, yeah. but they were always like spooky ghost stories about Thalnora, the witch in the woods, who would sort of twist things around a little. You know, I think I heard about her. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're just stories, though. Okay, like, that the older... Kinds of, I heard lots of stories about Shadow Timberlin growing up that were just sort of you know, spirits whisk you away kind of things. It's just a thing. Yeah. That parents tell their children Keep for fun. Out, yeah. of the, mm. out of the woods. It's folk tales. It's normal. Every place has them. But if mm. it was entertained at the monastery, I don't suppose they're given to that That's much. That's a thing. I've asked Mr. Kalar about it before, and he didn't say it wasn't real. Did he warn you to be careful? I mean, he said if I ever saw the house to not go near it. Really? Okay, yeah. can we make a rule to not go to weird houses? But we might need we to. We might have to. Mm. But why? If this well, for a prophecy. person can help, maybe help us interpret the prophecy mm. we have. Why don't we start with the bright wall? Uh, we should, I agree. But we're going to go through the woods, so I'm just saying, if, if we're we going through the woods it. and you hear something whispering in your ear, maybe let a, let a girl know. Okay. Uh, you? <laughs> Do you see any other girls? I don't. You're right. Um. Mm, I think it is the caution is warranted though we don't want uh, any more deals with entities beyond our comprehension that whisper and heads <laughs> looking yep. at Flynn yep. though I will say I would be curious what such a thing would have to say about the old gods and mm -hmm. whether or not there's truth to this whole Blasphemy about them. Okay, so if you hear something whisper in your ears, we'll go to it. Together. Unless there's a whole bunch of shadow around. Right. Oh, right. We, don't, we don't go to the shadows because the prophecy said not um, to. What if Do it, I don't think we should overinflate the shadow thing. Do we know any shadows other are shadows? pretty prevalent. Either yeah. it's right or it's wrong. It said the shadows would lead, lead, you, lead astray. you astray. I think that just means I think it said the shadows like, may lead you astray. Uh, personally, I take that to mean people like Artemisia who would use the power that you've been given to blow up places like Primordia. That's my two, okay. that's my two copper pieces of the matter. Okay, so so we go to the town center and let's get Griff because many hands make light weight. Work. Yeah, sure. <laughs> It wait also makes sense. I thought it does, but maybe it doesn't. <laughs> no, as so you guys are walking down, the sort of like heading to. I thought it does, maybe it doesn't. Like <laughs> as you guys are sort of having this conversation, you arrive uh, eventually at the town square. You can see, sort of out in front of um, of the golden uh, or the gilded nugget, um, you do see Griff is kind of like geared up. Um, you see, he's got on like a very heavy cloak. Um, that is sort of done in the same style. It appears that Grom did send word to him that he mm -hmm. was to sort of lead you all. Um, and he, um, yeah, he's got very heavy, like, winter gear on, um, big longbow slung over the shoulder. You can see he's got two sort of swords, like, tucked into the, um, into, you know, holster, or not holsters. Um, that's not a thing. Uh, <laughs> to, uh, sheaths, scabbards, yeah. thank you. 
Um, he's got uh, a like bunch of pouches and various kind of things just like hanging on him, mm-hmm. um, and a big bag with a bedroll on the top of it. He looks kind of ready for ready for bear. Um, and when you guys sort of come up, he just sort of walks over to you, and um, you can see very, very just sort of matter of fact. He goes, "So, a little more time together." Hey, if you'll stand us for a minute. What's in the We're pouch? pretty good company. That's debatable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just mimic each other, why don't you? We didn't, it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't, it's, not, it's not a thing. We should go. Then he just turns and starts walking. <laughs> he's, Everyone's done with that. Yeah, you get the sense that Griff, his like namesake, like the just Griff, Gruff. He's like he's, he's a just gruff. he's a little Gruff mm-hmm. of a man. Um, but he's like we should go, and then he just turns on his heel and oh. starts walking. Unless there's any preparations or anything else you did want to do before you mm-hmm. left town, let's get on the road. Um, let's do it. I'll probably just be like, um, do we need to? Oh my, do we need to do anything with Keeper? Like, do we need to? Say goodbye. Do we need to give him any more instructions? Or Keeper is... has his instructions. He's good. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see him when we left, so I just assumed we were coming back to say goodbye. But if we don't need to, we can go. No, we're good. Okay. All right. And with that, you all sort of begin the trek. It's about time. No. 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 We have no. stuff to deal with. Some yeah, yeah, some had some stuff. Some big, the big some things. Yeah. 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 Not a problem. Road dragon. Yeah, you had some Whoa. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go back. <laughs> Wait, I forgot something. Um, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as you all sort of make your way out of, um, out of Sunplume, you sort of start heading off a little bit to the south and the, um, and the uh, and the east, so sorry southwest. And uh, as you guys sort of go, you Sunplume is kind of in not quite a valley, but sort of a depression. Like it sort of goes down to the sea and then sort of steps up in these sort of like hills. Not I mean, not even quite hills, like more cliffs than anything. Mm-hmm. They're like sort of it's a, it kind of a mix of both. So it takes okay. like some switchbacks to get kind of up and onto yeah. the plateau ish area where the woods kind of. Or come down and curve around. Um, uh, uh, that that being fa- said, I would be falling back very far. I am I am exhausted, mm-hmm. level two, oh. and my speed is half. So I will be <laughs> oh, no. noticeably dragging. <laughs> oh right, because you yeah. too. Yeah, that's right. You. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah. Totally yeah. forgot about that. Okay, and yeah, you've only had a short rest. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna offer Seeker a piggyback ride. Mm. Oh. Do you do you wanna? I can carry you. You look, you're kind of holding everyone else up, including yeah. Flynn and Olma. You just hear Griff from up front. <laughs> and to see, yeah. You're making Griff irritated. And... I don't care about Griff. <laughs> oh, he's, take... he's kind of leading us. I'll take... I, I would oh, care a little. Stealthiness not really working out for you at this moment, is it, Seeker? <sighs> Be good if you could move a little faster, or maybe make slightly more noise. Okay, next time I'll leave Blueberry at home. <laughs> don't worry about it. I'll take See? your piggyback right Okay, <laughs> hop on. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. And with that, uh, you you go up sort of the rise, and as you do, you turn around and you look at sort of Sunplume, and you can see it, um, you know, like all the lights and things like that, and you can kind of see a little bit more of um, the detail of the town. You see on the outskirts of town there, on the sort of like southernmost edge, the Wandering Willow, where you first sort of arrived, uh, and met with Brim, mm-hmm. you can see off to your sort of the, the north and west of you guys still a little bit, you see um, the watchtower from which the alarm bells mm-hmm. were ringing when the mm-hmm. um, when the giants first attacked. You can see this like very weathered and old and you see like a little light at the top of it, what appears to be a, a lantern or a flame. Um, you can see over kind of the hills as they proceed down towards the sea, you can see the little, the sort of wharf area, this almost secondary area of sun plume and you can see there this, this a small lighthouse that's uh, this sort of just you know is is currently its light so sort of periodically sweeps out into the bay um, and all the little twinkling lights and all the all the little elements and now as you guys leave having known the place seeing its people seeing the the very real elements that, that make up this town and now maybe maybe a place for you all to hang your hats and a place to maybe call home. I'm not sure how everybody feels about that, but (laughs) I, 
I'd like to think it's on some folks' mind as you sort of look back and, and see that before you turn and keep walking and eventually enter into the thick, tall trees of the Raging Wood. As you enter once again, you hear that sort of constant and ever-present like of the bobs high above you sort of rubbing together and the constant wind that sort of runs through this place. You see thick, thick tree trunks that rise up, sometimes a couple hundred feet into the air, like massive, massive trees. And as you get in deeper and deeper, you see as the ground cover gets thicker and thicker. But with Griff leading you, you notice it is noticeably faster. It's as if he sort of picks and mm. sort of shuffles his way almost effortlessly through. He always finds the right path. And he, at some point, he goes, follow my footsteps. And then he just keeps <laughs> hammering away. Like he's, and he, and he moves. I thought that's what they were doing. They, I don't, I started, I started just more like yeah. intensely. Like, yeah. <laughs> just literally all okay. trying. The, the trail you all leave is just like a mishmash of weird footprints all <laughs> in the same exact spot. And, the and then the little footprints of Oma and Flynn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I can't yeah. quite get the stride. Get the stride. <laughs> um, but yeah, you all sort of make, begin to make your way through these, uh, through these woods. <laughs> And as you do, you kind of feel like this, the the presence, it gets quiet. Like there's like a, an almost, uh, it's not like evil, but mm. it's oppressive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the, the feeling of being in this place. And for Griff looks very comfortable here. That silence, that presence, that sort of like overbearing thing brings him comfort. And you see his shoulders kind of like let loose as he appears to be much more comfortable out here than mm. he is in town. Mm. Um, but I'd be curious to know just very quickly, like as you guys go into this place and these massive trees and everything's kind of shifting all the time, the shadows kind of constantly seeing out of the edge of your vision. And this, all you hear is like your each other's breathing and the like ragged <laughs> of snow crunching underneath your feet. Like what, what's, what's going through everybody's head as you guys are sort of tracking along here. I'll start with you, Flynn. Um, I think with uh, the most recent readings um, <laughs> together and separately. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, knowing that shadows are to be <laughs> worry, worrisome and scary. I w- I'm curious, maybe I could make a spooky vibes check. <laughs> yeah. oh. Sure. Oh, yeah. 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 Make a spooky vibes check. Okay, okay. Oh, why would shadows matter to you, Flynn? Yeah, yeah, what do you mean? I'm just talking about let's, the process. Let's have a spooky. Guys, this is my first spooky vibes check as DM. Hey. Hey. Oh, All right. Snap. Go ahead and roll. It's just it's D20 plus wisdom mod, right? Okay. That's correct. All right. Let me get that ready. Boop a doop. Wisdom mod is. Are you wise? Eight. Eight. Oh. As you look around, the it's a little unsettling, the constant sort of shifting, and especially given the moniker of... Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's definitely <laughs> an element of... There, there, there's, some, there's some spooky... Mm-hmm. It's not like you don't see anything mm-hmm. or feel anything, but oh, you're not sure if it's just your imagination or... I feel like if anything, um, my, I, I would be... My eyes are kind of looking in the places where I think, I don't know, there's, there's shadows there and I'm like looking, I'm looking over here and I'm almost like if I'm looking for something mm-hmm. and I, maybe I don't even know what I'm looking for, but I'm looking for something. And uh, there may be like a, a, a momentary uh, sign of relief uh, when I don't see anything. <laughs> and that's kind of, and then that's just like, that's uh, there's like a, maybe a little bit of an on edge. You're preoccupied. Yeah, where I'm looking I'm around. trying my best to follow the footsteps, but again, without, with the smaller stride and mm-hmm. my mind kind of scared. I, I may seem aloof or a little bit distant. Okay. Seeker. I just, uh, this is here. I hate it here. <clears throat> I don't have to, um, I'm, I'm right here, Seeker. You can hate. whisper. Don't like the wood. <laughs> I'm a city boy. You're on the the wood. Like <laughs> it makes him creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say, yeah, I kind of like nudge him. <laughs> I know, but look, you're on my back, and I really like the woods, so <laughs> it kind of cancels out, and then you, I will protect you from... What are you afraid of in the woods? I just don't like it. It's creepy. You, you don't even have to walk. I'm carrying you. Thank you. You what? doesn't make it less creepy. But 
it's just trees look and then i will start to like look around and um i will point out like trying to remember lessons with my dad in the garden i will point out like different trees to seek and you can tell because so the um that one no there are no leaves that one's an evergreen <laughs> That one's an evergreen, and then that one, the bark on it is white, and then so we move over here and we get to different kinds of bark. Oh, oh. Okay, I feel a little better. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're just trees. There's just a bunch of trees. That's what makes up a forest. It feels, you don't feel, it feels, um... It's quiet. Dark. And I don't like it. Cur- curiosity question. Mm. Because... I, I I know this doesn't mean I don't feel fear, but it, it is much harder for me to become yeah. frightened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I can like I can observe what he's saying, but do I feel this oppressive feeling that Seeker is mentioning? Interesting. I I think that I think that maybe I'd like to think that that like you said, it's not that you don't feel it. It's just right. that it doesn't the your it will affect me. Like okay. you just through sheer force of will, it's like. I'm not going to think about that mm-hmm. or I'm not going to, okay. I'm not going to let that get Bob. to me. Mm-hmm. So I, I do think that you, you feel it, I acknowledge it, acknowledge it, but it just doesn't bother you. We, we faced a lot of scary things, Seeker. We, we fought a dragon and a bunch of giants yesterday and you're afraid of trees. <laughs> like, yeah, it's kind of spooky in here, what? but you know, uh, creepy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, will you just hold on extra tight? And I kind of like give his arms like a little squeeze, like enough to kind of hurt in like a sibling way, like mm. a mean. Um, mm. Mm. I want this art. <laughs> you guys hear that? I want this. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you as Seeker is on your back, you sort of go like, these are ferns. That's a redwood. That's a bull pine. That's a cosp of aspen. Cosp, cops of aspen. There you go. Cops. It's a cops of aspen. Mm-hmm. You sort of just like use the, the sort of like the the horticulture lecture to mm-hmm. maybe try to assuage Seeker of his fear of the woods. Yeah. His well placed fear. Woods are spooky. <laughs> um, these oh. these are some spooky woods. Um, I am trying to extend my feet. To hit the footprints. Exactly. And sometimes that means leaping. Um, and then I'm also listening to see if I can get any whispers. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah. You sort of like, you crane your ears, you're listening, and you, uh, you sort of concentrating on, like, leaping, and like making sure to hit each of the footprints. And then... Eventually, you hear a whisper. What are you listening for? As Brim behind you. <laughs> Brim is very perceptive and can see you like, like that. Listening. Amazing. And so he's he's messing with you a little I'm bit. Up. Listening, hop, hop, listening. Brim, what do you think I'm listening for? Spooky whisper. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, you should be listening too. I'm always listening. Do you hear anything? Mm-mm. Fine. And he, uh, he sort of goes and, like, leaps and leaps. And then he, like, you see him take off as he, like, and then he starts running and you see his feet, like, come out of the snow and he, like, runs up a tree and then backflips off of it and floats down. And <laughs> sort of lands in front of you. He's like, No one likes a show off. <laughs> it's a little fun, though. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and then he like walks next to you. He's like, But seriously, I'll keep my eyes out. But I don't think she'd be this close to town. Okay, well, we'll just keep our ears out. Eyes and ears open. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and um yeah you, you, he just and uh he does ask he goes you've been working on your uh and then he waves his hand in the snow I know it hasn't been long but gotta practice uh, I don't even know how to practice I've been I can't do it anymore I don't believe that <laughs> must be nice to be you and live in delusional land <laughs> just saying but you tried hard enough <laughs> oh. <gasps> I do try ooh Okay. <laughs> you just walk, walk. And I, um, I, I scoop it. my hands down and pick up a ball of 
um, snow and I pack it and I think about it really hard, making it really hard. And I try and I try and I try to like make it as hard as I can. <laughs> I don't know if it's hard or not. And I throw it at Brim's back. <laughs> <laughs> make, a, make an attack Yeah! Roll. <laughs> yeah, attack roll. Oh! <laughs> the dice like you today. Um, what am I using? What am I, what am I? Uh, this will be your, uh, proficiency plus dex mod. Proficient <laughs> with snowballs. That's right. 27. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like, as it sails towards the back of his, t- towards the back, you see it, like, it sort of hits and, like, hits right in the, the middle of the back where the sword sheath is sort of strapped across his back. And you see as it, like, it impacts and then... Like, it's doesn't, like, it, like, hits and then kind of, like, almost breaks, like, a little bit. Ooh. And he, like, stops. <laughs> and then you see that, like, the red eyes just, like, <laughs> look over the shoulder. I start whistling and looking in the other direction. I'm going to get you for that. Oh. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> just wait kid and uh and he just keeps walking um awesome <laughs> and uh what's what's Kelly thinking about I think when the silence first falls it's comforting and it like brings me back to maintaining the catacombs at Don Pillar and just like all of the insular experiences of being on the pilgrimage of like putting together like literally building temples and and small villages and just all of the quiet work that I've done over my career and but that kind of like reflection starts to sour as it's like as I'm integrating that with the new information but as that's kind of weighing me down I can hear Desley pointing out the foliage to seek her and I do my best to just like listen to that and watch that and just like let that be the entertainment for the journey and and let that like move my steps forward as they get um, as they go from being kind of like heavy and ponderous to being a little lighter in the snow and you guys trudge on carrying through foot after footstep for several hours sort of into the day you eventually reach a point where you sit down take a break grab some you know eat some food Mm -hmm. replenish your water you have the opportunity to chat or do whatever um but you then eventually kind of griff doesn't let you rest long he's very (laughs) much like he just like kind of suddenly stops and he's like break (laughs) drink some water just because it's cold doesn't mean you're not sweating eat especially you <laughs> and then he just leaves like he just walks away and oh. goes to like sk- like you, you can sense that he's yeah, yeah. keeping an eye out for I, you I don't I don't like Griff <laughs> he's uh, hard to like I'll tell you that Digger, which one do you I'm enjoying his company I don't see an issue <laughs> which one do you hate more the woods or Griff they are the same they're the same hey speaker <gasps> yes you know I went through these woods all alone when I was 10 years old you are strong. You have the light of flowers in you. I don't. Just roll my eyes. Don't mm-hmm. you, though? To some extent, Sager? I mean, a little bit. Not like that. No, I suppose it's different. Um, we wanted to tell you all. I got the, I got the letter from a friend in Westreach. The one who I reached out to to find you the first time. Uh, mm. It seems you... Maybe we have become a little bit more famous. And uh, he's a little concerned because people are looking. Beyond that, Westreach is about to befall a siege in Kaldur. What? The, the, he's, he's forecasting a, an attack. When? Soon. Didn't give a date. Hmm. That's incredibly alarming. Is that why all the ships have left? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, because it is pretty far. 
Mm. They seemed pretty... Well, at the last we heard, they'd taken Coldcrest, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe they are moving toward North Shield, but that was a while ago, weeks. Well, they could have split forces. Yeah, I mean, if they're going all the way up here to get resources, then they're definitely a, it's a big army. It's mm-hmm. a big step. It's the, it's the is, right? It's the Westridge is hard to get to, isn't it? In the clouds, right. it's a floating city. Yes, you can still get there. Yeah, but I mean, like maybe, maybe it'll they'll be fine because if if he sent you a message, then that means that they probably know, so they're preparing. And uh, like Kelly like said, if they're up in the Benville Rise and they're going here and they're they're split, so maybe they're not Spread as strong. Then, yeah. you, did he need help? No, he just suggested leaving if I was oh. near. Okay. Anybody got any family out there? Mm. Ganbo there? Ganbo there, yes, but not, not, in, not in the beach. Okay. Except Thaddeus and, and 86. And 86. They were going to Westreach to get fixed. Yes. Maybe we reach out to Should Thaddeus. Contact? Just give him a. Yeah, heads might be up. good. That's <laughs> <laughs> where they made the. The base. Ah, jeez. Well, and maybe ask him if he's a full body now. They, they might Ooh, have yeah. information too. They might be able to. Mm-hmm. But they don't are fears. exhaust yourself if you're. No, it's probably a good idea. I sigh. No have... Ugh. Exhaust yourself. Don't exhaust yourself. Yeah, I don't intend to. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> that that dragon does that to you, Seeker. Blueberry doesn't mean to. And Do you know all the motivations of that creature, Alma? She's, she's <laughs> Blueberry loves us. He doesn't mean to hurt you. Alma is right. She, she actually is very kind. She doesn't mean to hurt you. No, I don't think she does. I don't know that she has any... Isn't it, isn't it a I can card? Feel, I can feel... Yes. No! But, but like a, a, anyone real. could take the card and use it. And I it would feel her when I'm using the card. And you feel that she loves you? Uh, us, actually. <laughs> Us. Yes. Yeah, wow. I'm we. I am very grateful for the sacrifice you make for this group. Thank you, Flynn. Even if they hurt, I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. And your your sacrifices for the group. Thank you. What? The biggest <clears throat> eye roll that ever happened is happening <laughs> in my face right now. And I actually was thinking about something. I don't know. We have a lot of questions, and um. The one thing about the gods and the cycle and all that stuff. Um, so that remind me, if if the new gods take out the old gods and become the old gods, and there's a new new gods that take out the old, that means that like the old gods took out gods before that. So yeah. if there was a way for us to reach out to the old gods and talk to them, and just be like, hey, did you kill a bunch of gods and take their seat? Wouldn't that be a way to find out if all this is? Real? Then you assume they'll be honest with us. I mean, who, who are we gonna trust if not the people you guys follow? Well, Famir is at rest. Follow Fenra. Right now. Whatever. Famir, Kalik just said Famir is resting. It's the oh, long right. eve. Right. Because of the long eve, right? Right. But when it's over, maybe we, we reach out if you can. I don't know if that's something you can do. Because that might answer some questions. I. Bad. I, uh. Yes, I I want to ask that of her. I want to know. Yeah. I mean, if there's anyone to trust, I figured you'd trust her. I, I do. Just a thought. To be honest, I, I'm lying. I don't want to ask her. I don't want to know what it is necessary. You could ask Zachriel. He might have done it a lot more recently. <laughs> he seems more talkative. Yes. Um, and maybe he knows of this foretold cataclysm, this the event. But maybe don't tell him about me. He probably already knows. He probably does. <laughs> Zekro has all the power he needs. I feel like if he wanted to find out about you, Ulma, he probably... He's, he's a god. He, yeah, he is. He's but if the gods are just men... 
Apparently, but you know, I'm still trying to wrap the my high mind around gives that. You a lot of power. And what mm. that means. Well, maybe we should go to the high mountain. No, I'm I don't. That's the kind of thinking that got to... everyone in the world here in the first place. Well, maybe we would need to to stop the cycle or whatever. I don't know. We. <laughs> what? Yes. Is this the kind of sacrifice you were referring to? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of Because I don't really think that's much of a sacrifice. Wasn't that that's something in the prophecy? Like, you're going to stop the cycle? I yeah, down. stopping the cycle is I'm one thing. Go- becoming cycle. a god to stop the cycle is a right. whole other story. So maybe we need to go there to do that. That's all I'm saying. We, oh, we might have to go to the high... Ma- right. No, not... Okay, I thought you were suggesting elevating yourself to god. No. And that was a little yeah, no, concerning. That's, saying, I that's the implication of going to the high mountain. I know I have, like... Yeah. No, that's not what I was saying. Okay. Right. Just crazy. so we're on the same page. I don't want to be a god. Seems yeah, sure. like a headache. By the way, how's your head doing, Tessa? Oh, it's better. I've had I've had time to think things through. See, um... Sorry if this is giving you another one. Nope. I'm fine, Flynn. Thank you for checking up. Good. Um... I like to check in on people, make sure they're okay, you know? Can you sure. message Thaddeus? Mm. Hi. I will look for Thaddeus's tether, negotiate with them <laughs> <laughs> to find it. Yeah, how do you do that? Yeah, wait, yeah. What is that like? Like, how Well, do you... you literally see when I cast this spell, it looks like I'm sorting through like a almost like a filing cabinet, like of threads. Like it's like a, a ball of yarn has spilled in front of me, and I'm like climbing through it to like find this tether. And my eyes are are, are overflown with ashes with mm. these burning ashes as I'm looking through this this thing and I can see these threads that connect everything in the universe and I'm trying to find the particular one that'll lead me to Thaddeus. See, you don't like... you don't see those threads. No, just see no, me I doing see this you. negotiation. Your... That's right, right. negotiation. <laughs> we see your eyes though, right? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, you oh, see like up. swimming. That's a that's a new kind of negotiation, Oma. I'm really learning a lot today. Did he get hurt his eyes? And I eventually find <laughs> I don't think so. Grab it, twist around my palm, pull it to my heart. Ajunkis. Darius, we have word that Kaldor is moving on Westreach. Can you and yours uh, get away and be safe? Moment passes. Oh, hey, Kelly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we made it. Good. Got my legs back. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> Walking around is just ahead. Sucks. Attack? We can. We should leave? Okay. Hey, did you. And then. <laughs> <laughs> I miss him. I miss him so much. As, my, as the, the embers. Fizzle out from my eyes. Ah, uh, he's well. He seems fine. Uh, he's got his legs. Nice. I assume he also meant the rest of the body, but maybe he's just the head on some legs. Huh. Um, that would be a sight. <laughs> Is he safe? Is he? He there? seemed to think they could handle the fight, but um, he took my warning. Okay. As long as it's he knows. Them what they decide. Yeah, it's good information. Certainly. All we can do for now. Yeah. Is there anyone else we need to pass it on to that's urgent? I don't know anyone close to Westreach, so I'm, I'm I don't fine. know anyone there. Hopefully, if your associate knows Seeker, they are also passing yeah. it through the necessary channels to protect those who need it. Leslie? As you're looking huh? at Seeker, your thing glows gold. <laughs> oh! Huh? Snap! Because 86 Seeker. has one, right? Yeah. yeah. Your, your, <laughs> your thing, your thing is, is, uh, <laughs> is shining again. Uh, okay. Um, that's, okay. can I? I'm, gonna, I'm huh? going to get down. Oh, you just for a moment. Oh, we're okay. resting. We're, we're, got I off. Right. Oh, yeah, we're resting. 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 But yeah, you. So yeah, you're. You I guys are is sitting around. <laughs> so you're I, sitting around. I take it off and I open it up and. <laughs> yeah. So you see, yeah, he's, like you see from eighty six, she just goes, "Wait, why are we leaving?" Question mark. There's an attack from where? And then it just says eight six, on there. Can't respond. So. <laughs> uh, 
or they got their message, but they don't know where the attack is coming from, nor do I. And so I don't know if they will leave. Yes, it's not exactly prime intel, is it? Mm. The, the Galdor is going to attack at a time mm. it's from a direction. Kind of. <laughs> It's. I mean, it's deep. It's. It, it. It would be a big problem if they actually get to Westreach. So, I can understand why they would be surprised. Well, I mean, as long as they know, maybe now, even though if they don't know the answer, maybe they'll start digging for it in, in the city. If it does happen, it won't be completely by right. surprise that right. it could happen in the near future. They can start setting up. Hopefully, they will safe prepare. Goal. Yeah. Flynn, did you want to ask me a question? No. Um. I forgot. Oh. All right. Break's over. Oh. Hi, hi, Captain. Yes, Sergeant. Oh, that's where there's cool. a oh, moment where on, Gri- he like stops, steps up short, keeps walking. Like, Can we just say hi, right, Captain? He's like, <laughs> and then he keeps walking. <laughs> it's like trying to ascertain, like, she being sarcastic. <laughs> and then you guys wait. I'm almost, gonna shoot. And then he <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost <laughs> always. Save that. <sighs> but uh, and yeah, you guys all sort of after a time. Um, unless I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt anything, but no. you guys can. Well, the break is officially over. You can go yeah, walk yeah, and no, talk. No, but yeah. We gotta go. We yeah. gotta go. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, we're trying to make time. Yeah. yeah. So Definitely. Uh, Bend down a little so I can what? get back onto y'all. <gasps> Please. Fuck. Thank you. Be- okay. Ow! Who, who's more of a burden, do you suppose, Desley? Artemisia or Seeker? Oh, Artemisia weighs, <laughs> like, maybe nothing. Yeah. Seeker... He's got hollow bones. <laughs> like, yes, like a chicken. <laughs> Like a chicken, it sort of crest <laughs> arrives in the woods, and then we, um, you guys keep walking. Um, you walk for about another four hours, after mm-hmm. which point the cold starts to kind of get mm-hmm. to you. Um, the way that that I always handle travel is you can really only travel for about eight hours of a time. Wow, English. Huh? There it is. You can only travel for about eight hours at a time before you go into what is called a forced march, after which every right. hour you make saves. Sure. So you guys can attempt to do that to try to get to there a little bit faster, but you do risk further exhaustion. I um, think we're probably... Mm-hmm. 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 We also knew it was going to take us a couple yeah. of days. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think like about once we reach the fourth, once we reach like the third hour, we'd start looking for yeah. safer places to... Cool. Better. Yeah. yeah, and eventually you do. You come upon so as you guys are getting to that time, um, you all sort of you you see ahead of you. Griff just stops, and then he kind of like slings the bag off and throws it against a tree, um, and uh, he him. just like you it's see great. that there's kind of like a little clearing, like an opening around mm-hmm. a small um, what appears like a, not quite a pond, not quite a lake. Well. A pond. It's a pond. Okay. So there's a pond that's like a few, maybe 120, 130 feet across or so in this sort of little clearing. It's mostly frozen over, like out in the, it's got that, where white fades to like that deep blue out mm-hmm. in the center. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see that there is a piece of it that is still not frozen out there. Um, so Griff kind of turns and goes, don't walk on the ice. Like, just. Griff. Yeah, you think. Griff. I know one of us is a literal child, but I mean, it's better. Than- Flynn? Uh, <coughs> Oma. Oh. We got. It. We won't walk. <laughs> Funny, Alma. I don't. I don't know. And <laughs> he kind of makes eyes at Seeker, who is on this, and he's like, <laughs> mm. and then he just he unslings his bow, drops his pack, and you see he sort of pulls the cloak over himself, and he goes, "Um, I'll be back in a bit. I'm gonna go get dinner," and he leaves. Do you need any help? Oh, thank he you. Has, he sort of I like gets far away. No. He turns. Can you hunt? I've hunted before. You have? Yeah. She lived. She lived out in the wilds. For also, Shrya and I hunt. Last time I was year. a seeker, we hunted More. with Eldra. I learn something new every day. Sure. Come along. And he just sort of shrugs and then walks. So if you want to follow I, him, you I can. Wa- than him. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, yeah. Alma. You catch uh-huh. up to him. Don't avoid avoid the shadows or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, you catch up to him and you, you sort of go with him and you can see like out here, now that he's kind of away from you guys, he moves even like faster. Yeah. Like his, yeah. it lit, I mean, he's, I a, he's a ranger. Yeah. Land stride takes is, over and he, he starts, like he starts eating ground and before you know it, like you're it's it's a push to keep up with him, um, but eventually, like he makes very quick time away from the camp, um, and we'll come back to that in a little while. Okay. Um, 
but uh, as back at camp, you guys all sort of set up. You get the fire going and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, bed down for the evening, make all the tents and things like that. As far as when you all are traveling, clarify for me if you could. Are there any spells that take place, so like a you know Liam and Sunny Hut, Magnificent Mansion, anything like that? Or nothing. What are those? Nothing. No. No. Uh, no. I thought Jean, absolutely I thought not. Maybe, I love I it. I was hopeful that maybe the necklace was actually not. Like a boot boon like that, but if she like used it while she was traveling, it was like a mobile house. Mobile house. Like I was like, awesome. maybe it was not. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Didn't even think about nope. that. No. Um. But uh. But yeah, she. <laughs> that's so funny. That would have been Got awesome. It. Wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> but uh. So yeah, she. Um. You guys all sort of set up camp and things like that. I don't know if there's any rituals or anything like that that you all do before the evening. Uh. I will for. So newish, but I will, um, I will perform a ritual to cast alarm cool. uh, mm. around us, and just uh, uh, I'm going to. I'm very tired. Like I, I appreciate the ride, but I'm a little sore, more sore. I'm going to put um, it's the armor. It's the chainmail. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it digs in. <laughs> It dies. It's not. Well, imagine having to wear it all the time. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. Tough. You should get, you you should get tough. the mayor's armor. The huh? mayor's armor that like... Oh, why did it just kind of sort of unfold yeah, onto like, him? Ooh, yeah, that's I should have cool. asked that's him that. about that. We should have asked, yeah. I should have. Well, well, next time we get back. Seeker, you want to you wanna go to sleep now? No, I'm going to um, make it so if... Uh, so if someone comes near us, we, we will get a little bit of a warning. Someone or All something. Right. And I'll start setting up. And uh, <laughs> He says something. I'll look out of the woods again. <laughs> Looking in the shadows. <laughs> hoping I don't see anything. <laughs> Head whips <laughs> over. Is that his? No. <laughs> hand? No. Nothing, nothing but ferns waving in the breeze. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, you sort you pull out the silver thread yeah. required for the alarm cell, and you sort of lay it into the ground. And as you lay it in each segment, it <sighs> kind of vanishes and like almost leaves that. You, and you you sense that it sort of takes root in this space. Um, but you successfully cast alarm. Does it, is it does it like grow purple or anything like that? Yeah, like, is it, like it a, would it would be like the silver line, but the like a plasmatic flame would run along it and like it would evaporate almost, mm-hmm. and then just. Do we like, see that? Almost like a small wall of force mm-hmm. comes up a couple feet from it. Um, yeah, you would see it. Okay. This sort it. of shimmering purple like kind of goes up and then fades back down cool. again. Very you cool. can see that it's taken hold. So yeah, you've got you've got an alarm around the camp that will alert you. Is have you set it so that only you hear the alarm or does it audibly I want to signal audible, to everybody? An audible, audible like a bell. Perfect. Okay. For cool. everyone. And now I will go to sleep. Good night. Um, good, good night, seeker. That's a good idea. Should we divide up watches while we're, I suppose, Alma and Griff are on they? a hunt for a bit? First watch? I'll or... take your seeker. You need some rest. It's Brim, sorry, talking. Brim says that to you. Thank you. you and got... Maybe you, you should just sleep through the night, honestly. I that might be a good idea. I'm not going to argue. Thank there's, you. There's enough of us to cover. Brim, I'll stay up with you. Okay. Sure. Uh, we're waiting for Alma and Griff to get back. We're waiting for Alma and Griff to get back before we start watching. Okay. Right. Cool. So, as you guys all prepare camp, yeah. So you're yeah. out there with uh, you're out there with Griff, and um, he yeah. just sort of like the hood comes up, and you see him. He sort of stalks through, and um, eventually you come after like probably a good forty minutes or so of like really hoofing it. He eventually like just stops, and then he looks down at the ground, and you can see like he he sees a game trail that is running through the snow and he sort of looks over at you when did you learn to hunt I mean I never officially learned I just had to do it all right <laughs> and he, just, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he uh, and he's sort of like just he goes this is a game trail uh-huh it's following game trails is easy because the animals always take the path of least resistance they're smarter than we are so if you follow game trails, it'll take you to wherever they are. Okay. This is what it looks like. And he sort of starts pointing out to you the little subtle signs of like, and you can see how it naturally follows kind of the lowest levels of elevation. Mm-hmm. There's no wasted movement. They don't go mm-hmm. over or under anything that they shouldn't. Like it just very kind of naturally flows with mm-hmm. the land. Um, and and he, and he sort of points out all those little features to you. He's like, these are deer tracks. Big mm-hmm. one too, by the look of it. 
normally they're this big and he kind of like draws on the inner circle of the thing and then he's like all right let's, let's, let's go and this is the most syllables you've ever heard him say at once <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna hunt with you got a weapon um i got a couple <laughs> and i pull like a sling from my backpack oh but I'm not going to use it. <laughs> okay. Good enough. All right, let's go. And he takes off. You walk for another 20 or 30 minutes or so before eventually he like, and he raises up his hand. Um, go to make a stealth check for me. Nice. This is like, it's going to be so one. scary. I know. I love you. Uh, stealth check? Yeah. <laughs> so good at it, too. 27? 27. Again. The, um, like, he, I'm, I'm not even invisible. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, you're so what like, are you? As, he's like, <laughs> as he sort of holds up his hand, sure. and then he looks over at you, and he kind of, like, motions, and then he does this, and then you sort of turn it on, and you start, like, stepping very carefully, mm -hmm. and there's a moment where his eyes kind of narrow, and he looks at you, <laughs> and there's, like, a very grudging, just... <laughs> <laughs> Mm. And then he uh, kind of shakes his head a little bit, and then you see as he like reaches up into his his quiver and pulls like a long sort of black fletched arrow mm. out, and he sort of knocks it to this like really beautiful deep kind of like recurved long bow that he has, mm -hmm. which is normally those two things don't exist together, but fucking magic. Uh, <laughs> um, so he uh, he pulls it out and he starts like kind of walking around like a short bend. There's kind of like a series of boulders in front of you. But um, and as you get a little bit closer, you hear what he was hearing, which is this subtle, very, very subtle flow of water. You can hear this. like, And as you kind of round a corner, you can see this like little tiny, just like it's normally supposed to be a lot wider. There's probably like a six or seven mm -hmm. foot wide little stream that probably feeds the pond that you just came mm -hmm. from somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it is like mostly frozen. It's again, just kind of the middle of it that's still running and about 50, meh, about 50 yards, so like almost 150 feet away, mm -hmm. like right at the edge of longbow range, he, you see uh, like a deer, a big stag with like curling antlers that are up. And, um, and he just sort of like looks at it, looks down at you. Do I get the feeling, because this thing is huge, mm -hmm. do I get the feeling that if I used Firebolt, it would, like, instant, like It wouldn't, totally, like, destroy it or anything like that, no. Like, it would probably be fine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to walk, I'm going to stealth, like, sneakily walk um, away from him 30 mm -hmm. feet, because I need to be a little bit closer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I want to do kind of, like, a triangle, so cool. he's right in front of it, right, or, mm -hmm. like, on the side of it, and I want to get behind it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. But within 120 feet. So as you creep a little bit closer, we just use your previous stealth where mm -hmm. you silently sort of creep up and you get it to the edge of your range and you see as he likes, he sort of knocks the arrow and he, he goes to like, he kind of gives you a nod and then he draws and holds. Mm hmm I put my sling away. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like. <laughs> and I um, like twist my hand uh -huh. and create the fire bolt. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm ready to throw it when he nods. And he just nods at you. He's like, go ahead. And I throw it. <laughs> awesome. Make an attack roll for yeah. it. Yeah. I'm nervous to use this one. This one's been like... This is good. This is good. <laughs> delivering. Yeah, yeah. That's bound to happen. Oh. That's a 14 to hit. 14. It's a deer. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, got deer. Deer. it's got an armor class of like 12. Yeah. Um, nice. But yeah, so you see... It was bound to happen. Right? This thing like as your fireball sort of streaks across the open mm -hmm. space and takes it like right in that sort of that spot where, yeah. mm -hmm. where it's supposed to go and it just drops like it oh just like, my just fireball drops from your fireball yeah i mean yeah. it what you yeah. roll 3d10 yeah, yeah. 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 He, he real did uh, yeah. i mean go to roll damage for me we're gonna see actually because oh, okay. it a deer how many have a deer oh. can't have it. a regular it can't deer. Have. Yeah, they don't have much like, but i think they have more it's than like a, a townsfolk. Person. Remember, more than a town folk yeah. i think they have more they than, have more than a townsfolk yeah yeah folk are the weakest creatures in yeah the, no yeah existence. four hit points that's not true rats rats and squirrels and squirrels Birds. I don't know. You were 20. trying to get rid of it. 20? Rats? Yeah. It, like, it passes through it so quickly that this it's creature like, feels no pain. Good, it literally good. just, like, mm -hmm. and just oh. falls to the ground. And mm -hmm. then you see as he lets the go with attention <laughs> on the bow. He was, like, back because he wasn't sure. He's was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a shot, but then I'm going yeah. <laughs> And you see as the tension lets go from the bow, and he just. Nice. 
unconventional. <laughs> we just like, we like, use what we have? <laughs> he, just, like, he just walks over um, and you follow him and you go over there and you see the uh, the, the animal sort of laid there um, and he walks up to it and he puts its, its hands on his like his hand on it like over the wound kind of and you see as he reaches like he sort of leans down and you you hear him like whisper something um, like into the deer's ear almost um, you speak ancient Elvis you said right mm. so you you hear like the tones of Elvish and you kind of yeah. get the general meaning. Um, and he says, I honor your gift. Oh. Mm. And, and then he like, he picks it up, slings it over his shoulder. Um, and, uh, he says, all right, good job. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's just, like, <laughs> he's just, like, he, like, no nonsense guy. And he just like walks back with Do you. Do you use a bow a lot? Yeah. Are there a lot of people in the town that use bows to hunt? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I only ask because I don't know if you knew my mom, but I think she used to hunt with a bow. Yeah. Did you know her? Yeah. Was she nice? Maybe you, you see him smile for the first time today. Yeah. Mm. That's good. I don't know how to use a bow. Well, I taught her, so maybe I can teach you, too. You taught her how to use a bow? Yeah. That would be nice. All right. Okay. got to get you one first. Okay. Good one. Yeah, because I need one that fits me. Yeah, you're little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys kind of walk mm -hmm. in like companionable silence and he kind of keeps glancing over at you every once and again. Um, yeah, he, he knew your mom. Mm-hmm. He uh, seemed to be fond of her. But um, as you guys walk back, you uh, you arrive at, uh, at camp. And you guys see as he comes back with this big stag <laughs> sort of slung over his shoulders. And um, Olma's like alongside of him. I'm curious, how, how is Olma's demeanor when she gets back? Um, thoughtful. Yeah, but she's got like a, not her normal like exuberance, but she's like kind of settled. Like she's in a very calm place, like a very kind of like peaceful, thoughtful place. Awesome. So yeah, she, they get back and uh, Griff kind of goes about, he's got the, the big deer on his shoulders and he's it's like, yeah, this part's messy. I'm gonna... And he walks away, a ways. Um, and uh, about a half an hour yeah. to well, an hour while, later. While they were doing that and while this is going yeah, on, course, DM, I could just be looking around for berries and herbs of yeah, make a survival check variety. For me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make a survival check for me. Noise. Maybe with some of Thessaly's uh, <laughs> no notation. Oh, yeah, I could help with that. Can, oh, I, give, can I give him advantage? Yeah. Because yeah. I would have yeah, I mean, a you'd decent... Have to be well, with them to help Yeah, them. you would. <laughs> okay, I'm going to... If I notice what Kellek is doing, I will get excited because I love plants and I will... That's the only reason you're excited. Point plants. out... I do love plants. Plants, plants, plants. Yes. Okay. Okay. So... Advantage helps a lot there. Yeah. Yay! Uh, it's 23. Okay. I would like you to roll 2d6 for me, please. 2d6? Yeah. Hmm. God. Oh, oh God. no, it's gone forever. No. It's in the abyss. 
<laughs> okay, uh, five and a six. Five and a six oh, for a total yeah. of 11? Uh, correct. The dice okay, belongs cool. to the outcast um, now. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Gone to the abyss. The dice is the outcast. <laughs> um, so, um, as you're walking around, you find, yeah, you find, like, some, <laughs> some, um, some berries, like, just kind of some, definitely some edible, uh, edible plants and things like that. And then, um, as you're looking around, uh, you see a dark blue cap mushroom like kind of a, a, a selection of them okay. with a yellow striped stem okay um and um yeah as you go to sort of look at it um yeah uh, you find it and i mean i assume you go to harvest it mm -hmm. um Definitely. as you do as you sort of like go and you clip it off you see that the there's sort of puff of like blue powder kind of uh -oh. like oh, goes no. off at the top no it's okay you're fine um <laughs> <laughs> you, also, <laughs> you also start seeing things in triplicate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'll take two. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you find um, a, you find, hang on, roll a d4 for me, please. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, all the fun dice yeah. this time. How many special dice? Two. Two. You, uh, you were able to get two uh, blue toad shade mushroom, mushrooms. Nice. Toad um, shade. Toad shade. Blue Rubber. toad shade. Rubber. Ooh. Um, and you, does, does Thessaly have any, like, formal training or background in? No, okay. it's, it's not formal. It's just like um, when I was growing up, I would spend like all day at the estate when mother couldn't take care of me with my dad. So yeah. like, but it's not, for, it was just well, like experiential. Roll a, roll a nature check for me. Okay. Get you some nature. Nature. Ah. Well, roll a nurture check. Nurture. We've outcast a few dice. I feel like we have created the I outcast today. I didn't find the other die. I found another D8. <laughs> yeah, from a different time. From, 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 from a month from ago. A different <laughs> Good. No? It's a six. Are you, like, you're like, I think I've seen those before, but you have no idea what they do or We're what they're color. for. I don't know. I yeah. didn't grow up here. It doesn't uh, count. Um, yeah. You find uh, two um, uh, 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 examples, specimens. Ha, uh, that's yeah. the word I'm looking for. You find two specimens of blue toad shade. Okay. Um, what those do, you're not entirely certain. Uh, well, you go ahead and make a nature check for me, too. Okay. Yeah, because okay. it's something you... Why not? You like mushrooms. Oh, yeah, you're a healer. Duh. Yeah. Roll with advantage. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh, nature, you said? Uh-huh. Uh, it's uh, 18. 18. Uh, you know the blue toad shades are typically found in forests or very like watery coastal areas, which is right, it's right where you are, right? Mm -hmm. Sun Plume, I've always envisioned the topography as much like uh, like uh, Pacific Northwest in our mm -hmm. world, right? Mm -hmm. Like very, very rainy, very mm -hmm. big yeah. trees, lots cool. of greenery, um, snowy in the interior of the, of the continent. Mm -hmm. um, but blue toad shade can be used to help craft potions of gaseous form. Ooh. Okay. Oh. So um, you have two of those, yeah. Um, and yeah, you could, uh, with sufficient time, might be able to do some stuff with that. Um, in addition to, uh, you pr find like enough kind of berries and various other sort of edible tubers Just and such. some stuff to go yeah, with the rest like, of so it. A few wild onions and to things make like a, that. To make a proper um, meal and not yeah, just hunk to, of meat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To, to, <laughs> to make some, yeah, give some fiber in there, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you definitely find <laughs> enough to, over the course of like that probably two hours or so that they yeah. were gone. And I would have assumed that we knew we were going on this trip. So I would have asked, um, keeper to like put. Yeah, like you've got like herbs and spices and, stuff. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. bread and like bread and things like, like that in the back, of yeah. cheese, yeah, in yeah, the back, yeah, yeah. like stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. So. Um, but you, uh, after you know, over the course of the mm -hmm. next hour and a half or so, Griff comes back. He's fully done all the necessary dressing of the of the animal and goes on and prepares it for for all of you. So you kind of sit down. You have a meal of venison and wild tubers and <laughs> and, uh, and and mu mushrooms and. Um, not the blue toad, other yeah. kinds. Yeah. Uh, but bread. you find like I a lot of you pull bread out, bag. and you guys have like a nice, like nice little meal here in the woods. Um, and eventually, kind of the fire begins to sort of die down. Uh, Griff goes and throws some more logs onto it, um, and um, he, uh, yeah, he just uh, sort of looks at all of you and kind of nods, and his case lingers on you, Oma, for a little bit, and um, he says, uh, "Get some sleep, or up early in the morning." And then he kind of looks up. He kind of like shakes his head. He doesn't. He doesn't like that there's no sun. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use control flames to just kind of like build the fire up a little bit more before we go to sleep. Awesome. So you kind of burn mm -hmm. it, and it kind of. Um, and it's good timing because right about then you see like flakes of snow kind of start to fall mm -hmm. from the sky. Is sort of the temperature. You feel the temperature drop, and 
and that sort of feeling of that, the you know, the the storm coming in, not storm, but a, a little snow flurry kind of yeah. begin to come in and you see as they start to fall, um, illuminated by the firelight. And you all sort of one by one kind of make your way off to bed. Um, who is taking watches? So Flynn and Brem, you'll take first, yes? Well, uh, yeah. Alma, when are you taking your watch? I, I can take watch right now. Okay. I feel good. Yeah. I can take watch now. Brim, do you want to do the middle one? Sure. And I'll like kind of give like a smile to Alma. And I guess Pastly and I'll take the last watch. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. Great. Cool. Sounds good. Take take care of her. Yeah. Go to sleep now. Good night. See you in the morning. Good night. Am I just taking watch alone? That's fine. Oh, oh wait, oh, I Griff. thought you were Brim. No, you were missing. Oh, you're with Griff. You're with Griff. Griff. Well, Griff didn't say he was taking a watch, but oh. I thought. That's true. Yeah, he. Well, he, Griff he didn't say, like but he, he just kind of does. He's it. just like, like he's, he's watching yeah. right now. He's just oh, watching. Okay. He's just kind of. He's kind of just doing it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he uh, he stands. Just sort of stands watch. He, he goes and every once in a while he gets up and like kind of walks off. Mm-hmm. Comes back. He's got his bow on him. Just kind of sits down. I want to look through um, the notebook mm. on my watch, okay. the, or the the the, the um, uh, um, scroll. secret scroll, and just okay. kind of like try to cool. try to translate as oh, much cool. as I can yeah. of it. Um, if you could go ahead and add that you have put two hours of downtime okay. towards um, towards oh, unlocking the, the secrets of the scroll. Okay. I get that. Mm. Get that. <laughs> yep. secret. So, what do you get? Um, yeah, you start kind of you start kind of mm-hmm. making your way through some of the the arcane elements of what's in there are starting to kind of like come to you mm-hmm. a little bit. You're making your way through some of the words and like you 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 make headway for sure. Um, and throughout that time, yeah, you just kind of watch and you notice the snow kind of the the snowfall gets a little bit heavier and like comes down a little bit. The temperature kind of keeps dropping. Mm-hmm. It's getting really cold. I'll build the fire up as, cool. as needed. Yeah, and Griff kind of also joins in. He kind of grabs like. The, just just brings wood and like keeps mm-hmm. throwing it on there. Part of when he goes off is he goes and finds wood and then comes back and it's dry and you're like, how? <laughs> where, <laughs> where, I love this. Where, uh, magic. Yeah, he, ranger magic. Ranger yeah. magic. Yeah. Um, Nature magic. I love rangers so, so much. Cool. Um, so cool. But uh, yeah, he comes back and uh, keeps kind of throwing it on there and together you just kind of watch and yeah. unless there's anything Oma wants to say, mm-hmm. he's no, Alma feels a little. I feel. Um, I think I feel a little. Um, intimidated. Mm. Like I don't know how he. Like I want to know everything that he knew about my course, mom, yeah. but I also feel like I don't want to know at the mm-hmm. same time. Like it's just like such a hard place to be in, and I just feel like she's kind of a little shell shocked by. Yeah. Just being around somebody who knew, yeah, who knew her, her, and like knew her well, mm-hmm. and so I think I'm just like, cool. And I think I can get the feeling that he talks more when he's not talking about personal things. So mm-hmm. I think I'll, I, I think I'm kind of clocking that I'll learn more if ever I get the chance to yeah. learn how to use a boat with him. That I'll just yeah. hear more, yeah. kind of like how on the hunt. He shared a little bit more of like what he was doing while he was doing it. Mm-hmm. So I think that he's the kind of person who's he's got to be doing. He's got to be doing mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. And um, at one point he goes off and he's gone for a while, and then he comes back and he's got like a like a branch, a big branch in his hand, and he sits down and he starts like mm-hmm. like That's whittling cool. away at it. Um, and eventually your watch comes to an end. Mm-hmm. Temperature keeps dropping. It's getting really cold. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, your watch comes to an end. You go, you can wake up Brim. Yeah, I'll wake up Brim and Flynn. Right. <clears throat> I hate middle watch. Worst. Yeah. Shame, it's worst the worst one. watch. Yeah. I never want to do it. You like yeah. some sleep and then wake and then some more. And you never feel like you ever get a full night. It's worst. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. It's Flynn's fault that you're taking this watch. Yeah. <laughs> it's my <laughs> fault. I mean, I, I volunteered though. <laughs> but not for middle watch. Flynn said we'll take middle. It's all right. Somebody's got to do it, right? Yeah. All right. Good night, Have fun. Have a great <laughs> sleep, Alma. You're welcome. <sighs> all right. And he takes the, uh, he opens up his little gourd, and then he, like, pulls some water out of it and, like, rubs it I in his face. Hands out. He takes it and he, he kind of splatters it. All right. <laughs> well, 
What's going on, bud? You know, just... You know. And I, like, look up to my forehead. <laughs> I'm sure you saw. Yeah, yeah. There was a... Um, I don't want to say meeting, but... You know, that night... I didn't want to sleep. Yeah. That was probably for good reason. Yeah. But, I mean, they're gone, so... That's good. Is it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, I got some answers, which is good. Cool. So answers for what it is, what all this is, which is good. So you know, we're just gonna leave that hanging right there. Like I don't what's know. Going, you know what, what? 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 It's different from before, for sure. Okay. Like before. <laughs> Like, I didn't have control. Mm -hmm. And from what I've heard and read, I have control. So, that's good. So, when you say, like, you didn't have control before, <laughs> what does that, what does that, what does that look like? Well, so before, um, when I had the horns and all this stuff happened, I didn't really, um, it was kind of just th thrust upon me. I, I, it was, I think there's the thing with the crystal and breaking in and it's the whole thing. Um, and it kind of was part of me. And then it, there was like, it, it, it would, uh, tell me to do stuff. And, and then sometimes it would take over and I didn't have control basically. Most of the times when we were fighting, you and know. that's it's not happening. Well, no, I I I talk to them. So and they they said that they don't want control. They just, you know, want to help me. I just have to like do stuff maybe sometime. <laughs> so oh, what um <laughs> <laughs> Like, do what, though? Kind yeah. of stuff, you, know, <laughs> you know, that's like a really broad bucket, my dude. Well, I figured out, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a little. I mean, that's a little alarming. Well, like I mean, a little but, bit. You could see that, though, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. But, like, just better than before when I didn't have control of my body. I'll seed that. Positives. Yeah, right? positives. yeah, yeah. Positive. I'll, I'll seed that. I'll you know? Seed that. I, mean, I mean, I'm just doing, you know, what I can with what I got. I mean, and I feel like it could have been a lot worse. You know, at least I have guidelines, you know, so. Okay. So last time you had no control. No idea. No idea. This time, little control, some idea. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I have, I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of what it is. So. And what is it? It's kind of like a collaboration. <laughs> With what? A lord. So that's not bad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> In my experience, that's. I mean, a lord immediately decreases the chances of being a good thing. But, <laughs> but, a lord of like, what? Who? What's? What are we talking about here, man? Um, do you know what Shadehold is? No. Yeah, me either. Uh, the Lord of Shade holds. So, like, that's... It's not a demon. You know, it's it's the Lord of some place. You know? So, again, I have an idea. You know, I have... I mean, like, a great... I mean, ideally... Lord been, of Shade hold? Yeah. Do you know who that <laughs> is? Where that is? No. Not a clue. I know. Well, I mean... The last time I didn't even have a name, so I mean progress, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you, so you have an, a, a, a collaboration, yeah, <laughs> with the Lord of Shade Hole, yeah, <laughs> and you're just, I mean, what, and and you don't really know. Man, there's a lot to unpack. Um, well, okay. yeah, you know. Are you like, are you okay? 
No. But I have to be because I signed a contract, Brim. So I have to be. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean, not ideal, but it could be worse. So, and I feel like if I get asked to do something, I'll, you know, cross that bridge when I get to it. But I mean, maybe it's something simple like, hey, write down this note or, you know, erase a memory or something. I have to look again. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it said, but like, it could be little things, probably little things, right? They're not, they're not going to start me off with something massive, right? It's going to be something small. And what do you get at all of this? Abilities. That'll help. All right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so you so you got some abilities in exchange for doing things for this yeah. Lord of Shadehold, right? When, when, whenever they ask. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so mm. you know, I mean, again, didn't. I mean, if there was another way, I would have done it. Um, but this was the only way that I saw in the moment, you know. And again, you know, it's where I'm at. So I'm, I'm really trying to grasp it and think of it in a good way. Because if I don't, then I'm just going to start spiraling. Okay. All right. Um. I also really was wondering maybe if you could help me um, tell the others. I just don't know how to... I, I know that they don't like what I did. Um, and I mean, I, I know... Did it because I saw him die, and what I had wasn't enough, so I needed something else. And yeah, this isn't the perfect answer, but it it was one, you know. And 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 I know yeah. Kellogg most of all really hates me right now, and I don't know. Maybe if I can find out the right words to say, he'll hate me less. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In- in I yeah I mean if you want if you want help I'll help you I I'm not sure how I can help you um, just seemed like I don't know but look man what would brother Kalor say hmm <clears throat> what you do a lot of times it's important what we do our decisions are the things that make us the choices we make right yeah but the why we do them also matters i know i get reaching out for a lifeline when you feel like everything is going to shit yeah i get it yeah that makes sense but do you think that if they had the choice and Prim's eyes kind of like sweep out just around mm-hmm. do you think that if they had the choice to make with you they would want you to do what you did even if it meant even if it meant dying Like, if they were able to help me decide on whether to sign or not? Is that what you're saying? If they... I just sign, but... I mean, yeah, sign. Maybe even ask in the first place. I don't know. I mean, I have an idea. Yeah, like, probably not. Why, think, why do you think that is? Um, have you seen him? He hates demons. I mean, to be fair, they're pretty hateful. Right. Well, I mean, which that, see, that, this is the thing. Maybe like, maybe it's, I don't think it's a demon. So like, maybe he'll be cool with it. I mean, there's probably ways to figure that out. Maybe Master Scriven at the monastery can shed some light on it. I mean, we, yeah, I don't know. It's um maybe, you know, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't say anything about like how to, how to end contract. So maybe they have answers on that, but I don't know. I mean, like, I, it, 
if maybe maybe if the the things I have to do aren't too bad, maybe it's you know fine because maybe the, the abilities it says sound really good. I, I hope you know I could actually protect him. Yeah, you know, help. Again, there's the things we do, the choices we make, and the why we do them. And I get wanting to protect your friends. I really do. Yeah. But I don't think if they were in your shoes, they would want you to make that sacrifice. Or maybe... And I don't mean to... I'm not trying to be a dick. But... Was it a sacrifice? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever died? You know what that's like? To die? I've died. Gotten close. I've died, Grim. And... I don't know what it was like for everyone else, but I, I there, there was a, I, I saw nothing. It was just empty. And then I woke back up. Um, so if I can find a way to prevent that from happening, I'll do it. And then whatever consequences I get, I'll figure it out on the way. Because it's better than nothingness. I don't know what happens to the others. Half of them pray to gods. So I don't know if they get to go somewhere after this, but I don't pray to gods. So maybe it's different for Kellick and Thessaly and Seeker even. Maybe they go somewhere. I don't. I saw it. Well, it's what I didn't see. Two things. We all go somewhere. We all do. And... Um, you know, I got this, and he looks at the gourd. He said, I got this in the, uh, the Untok Desert on the western part of the continent. Okay. Um, there's this tribe, dwarves, who wander the desert there. And, um, I helped them. But they, um, they used to say something that is saying in their tribe, and, um, I don't, it doesn't really translate exactly, but there's worse things than death. Especially in this world. There's things that are a lot worse. And I know. I know you, uh... You don't want that to happen to anybody. Trust me. I get it. But. There's worse things. And whatever comes... You gotta face it on your feet. So do you think what I did was a mistake? Should I have let everyone die? If there was actually no other answer, should we have just perished in the Underdark? Because of a decision that I didn't really make. It was thrust upon me again. When Kellogg slashed away at that guard. You know, I can't really say. Because I wasn't there. I didn't see what happened. But... Whether or not it's a mistake, things still remains to be seen. Time will tell. But they care about you. If they didn't give a shit, I don't think you'd be here. Well, not everyone's asked about the horns, so maybe some people don't care anymore. And let's say it was a mistake, you know? Am I not allowed to make them? No, that's not what I'm saying, man. I don't think that's true at all. And but, like now, where, what do I, I mean, what do I do now? What would you do if you made this mistake? Let's say. Because I feel like all I'm getting is side eyes, cold shoulders. And it's like, I'm just dealing with what I got, man. <laughs> Fire's I mean, getting down. Maybe we should... Put it up. Yeah. I have a way to do that. My fire doesn't burn. 
and he like waves his hands and it's like a flame pops into it. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get what you're saying, but at the end of the day, it's hard to imagine that these people would have come this far with you if they didn't care. And I think that maybe you're putting things into other people's heads that you think is there rather than dealing with what actually is. And I get, I get why you're upset. But if you made a mistake, the only thing you can do is own it, apologize for it, take responsibility for it, and ask for the help that you need. And then the fire like dies down mm-hmm. kind of quickly. I look. I look at the. Uh, do I see Brim still? Yeah. I'll look. He's I'll, still there. I'll look at it and be like, what? "He looks. What'd you do? What? Turn it back up." And as you talk, your breath starts to. What? As Brim's does too. I'll look around. And the snow flurries pick up around you. Have you seen this before? No. <laughs> and you hear a. This kind of mournful, long wail of a howl. You've chose, I've, I've chose. And you see across the pond <gasps> as these two sort of like warbling clouds suddenly start moving very quickly. I'm like towards the shoulder. camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. Do we wake them up? Do we wake everyone up? Guys! We're going to go ahead and check out. <laughs> no one's resting. No. no, you guys got a short rest. Make sure you rolled your hit dice to yeah. uh, regain all your health and everything else. Oh no! Well, uh, hopefully <laughs> you are enjoying yourselves as much as we are. We'll see what these spooky clouds are when we come back next time. Thank you guys so much. You are all wonderful. And um, uh, yeah, goodbye, nerds. <laughs> Bye, nerds. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Hey, nerds. Rodney here. Hey, hey, come on in here for a second. I, I know you're enjoying Venture Forth, and we appreciate it. Please make sure you like, follow, and subscribe on all the platforms you use. Also, make sure to tell your friends so the word can get out there. To go the extra mile, hit that Patreon. Get yourself some amazing and exclusive bonus content, which is also going to help the show grow. All right, later, nerds. Later, nerds.